Luigi's Mansion is a pretty fascinating franchise. Every time a new one gets revealed, it comes out of nowhere. The original was hyped up to be the latest in the Mario series before showing off something entirely new. Dark Moon was revealed amidst a handful of already existing 3DS games at E3. The remake of the first game was thrown into a Nintendo Direct like it was no big deal. And then during the hype cycle for said remake, just when we were expecting new details, we got a new game instead. Luigi's Mansion 3. No subtitle for this one, huh? Yeah, that's gonna be weird for Americans. To be fair, we should've saw it coming. Luigi shooting a plunger in the Simon Belmont Smash trailer? D what? Why? That, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay. Now, I know Dark Moon wasn't everybody's cup of tea, but... A new Luigi's Mansion game? That still really excited me. Maybe the developers were gonna listen to all the complaints that a lot of people had, and give us the sequel that we all wanted. The sequel that we've been asking for for years. We may be well into November at this point. I couldn't play the entire game and get a video out on the day this game released on Halloween. Thanks for that, Nintendo. But here we are anyway. It's time to take a look at uh, uh, Green Mario's third spooky house. Ah, this looks very peaceful. What could possibly go wrong? The story begins with a toad attempting to drive a large bus. I'm on board with this game already. Mario, Peach, and a few other toads are going on vacation, and this time they didn't forget to invite Luigi. And he even brought his dog Polter pup, so cute, easily the best thing to come out of Dark Moon. Everyone's been invited to a special hotel called... Uh, the, the last resort? Oh, something's gonna go terribly wrong. Things, of course, don't seem to be quite right. Everyone has these weird faces, none of them have feet, that's a big red flag right there. And the name of the owner is Helen Gravely. That's practically an Ace Attorney name with how blatantly evil it is. But we do have this. Oh, doggy. Damn, this is gonna be a good game. And of course, things do go horribly wrong. It turns out that Helen is a big fan of King Boo, and she's freed him from his portrait prison. Seeking revenge once more, he manages to seal everybody in their own portraits, again, and before he manages to take one final victim, Luigi makes his escape, jumping down the laundry chute down to the basement of the hotel make it to the top of the hotel, and save everybody. I like this premise a lot. It gets to the point and doesn't really pretend to be any more mysterious than it is. Dark Moon slipping in these King Boo teases, acting as if his appearance is some sort of surprise, and saving the Mario being kidnapped twist until the near end of the game, it made any sort of tension feel pretty forced in my opinion, as minor as it sounds. Here, our goal is laid out to us immediately. Now go and do some ghost busting. I know it's not technically a mansion we're exploring, it's a hotel, but hey, check this out. Luigi is canonically allergic to dust. I'm pretty sure this is character development. Soon after, with our flashlight in hand, we find an upgraded Poltergust. We get to play with Polterpup for a little bit. I love this dog to death. Ha, you get it? Death because it's dead. Deal with a few bad ghosties, regain access to the dark light, and free E. Ged from his portrait prison. And, do you remember how the professor was so annoying in the last game he would just call you endlessly and it was one of the game's biggest problems? Well, to make up for that, they gave him a run cycle. <laughs> this, this is the greatest thing I have ever seen. Oh, oh, oh no. Gra Grandpa's stuck again. He also gives you a virtual boy? Never trust anybody that gives you a virtual boy. And it's as good a time as any to mention just how much animation we got here. It is arguably the best part of the entire package. In the past, Egad has always said this really charming gibberish, but now his mouth moves to said gibberish, and it's really weird. <laughs> Oh man, that's so weird. Whether or not you like Dark Moon, it is a safe assumption to say that the cutscenes were the best part of that game, and the attention solely given to the animation in this sequel, it's incredible. Every cutscene is just so filled with life and energy, and when we get to Gooigi, who lacks both of those things, it makes for some of the game's strongest laughs. Hey, look at this. Here's Polterpup rubbing its butt across the floor. Have I mentioned how much I love it yet? 
you know, Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle also had a ton of really in-depth animation with its cutscenes, and just like here in Luigi's Mansion, that was some of the best parts about that game. I am so excited to see this much charm and more in future Mario games. But how about the actual act of exploring the hotel? Well, I'm happy to report... By God, they damn near fixed everything. There's only one building to explore once again, and there's no longer any instances of regularly being pulled back to EGAD's lab to stop the adventure. That's all gone. I mean, okay, it happens like once or twice really early on, but after that, it's gone. Yeah, just explore until your thumbs fall off, no worries. And what's great is despite being in only one building, each floor is essentially a different stage, all having unique themes that go above and beyond anything the last game did with its multiple mansions. It does sorta stray further away from the creepy atmosphere the first game had, but I was so entertained from start to finish, I really didn't mind. If anything, I'm just kind of confused as to why some areas are as brightly lit as they are. Dark lighting within the rooms were the whole reason Luigi had a flashlight in the first place. Here though, I mean come on man, you're just wasting batteries. Between this and leaving his TV on in Dark Moon, we can very clearly tell that he has no problem wasting money on energy. The movie set was probably my favorite of all the floors. You stumble onto a handful of blue screen sets, and looking through the camera at them totally transforms the scene. It's brilliant. As a result of the floor setup, the game takes an almost formulaic approach. The point is to constantly collect elevator buttons to move higher and higher up the hotel. And aside from these two instances where you're stopped by this dumb cat, which just feels like a whole lot of padding in my opinion, it feels like you're constantly making progress. I'm a star! Man, I love him so much. Each button is also held by a boss ghost. Yes, they did it. They finally did the portrait ghosts again. I love this so much, man. They all match their themed floor perfectly, and each encounter leads to a pretty interesting boss fight that requires a bit of puzzle solving. Honestly, the only thing I really miss is a bit of flavor text like we got in the first game. It didn't really add a ton, but it would have given these characters that much more personality. The only time we really got a lot of that was with Morty, a starving film director who makes a movie out of the battle that you have, and once you finish that, he flies off to edit the movie. You can stop him from fulfilling his dreams, but I just don't really have the heart to do so. Well, until the near end of the game at least. You know, he has to finish the movie at some point, give it a few hours, and then we'll go ahead and check in on our good pal Morty. It's gonna be a friendly encounter, I assure you. Oh yeah, at that point, all bets are off. I gotta get my achievements. Oh boy, phew. Oh yeah. Naturally, we have to go for smaller ghosts as well. Combat has been totally changed here, and uh... I'm really, I'm really not sure if I like it or not. You fill up a meter similar to Dark Moon, but here in 3, you're then able to slam them onto the floor a handful of times, taking off a good chunk of their health. You take off the same amount every time, so there is a bit of strategy in dropping the health just enough to make one slam session take it out completely, and honestly, it is super satisfying. Especially when you slam them into other ghosts, oh that's really nice. However, this also makes the encounters easier than ever. Half of the fun before was overcoming the struggle of the ghosts pulling away from you, and any struggle feels nearly non-existent here. And when you're in crowds surrounded by them, sometimes they just watch you during the capturing process. What, you guys enjoying the show? At the very least, they do look better than the ones from Dark Moon. They're still occasionally a bit wacky and goofy, but it's a lot more downplayed than it was before, which is nice. We just see the standard ones in a ton of different outfits instead. I still prefer the blank stares and cackling laughs from the first game, but since we have bigger threats of the bosses now, it ends up feeling like less of an issue. And actually, if anything, it matters even less because combat takes a huge backseat to just pure exploration. And thank goodness too, any form of combat means it's possible to go into low health mode and then the music basically mutes itself and this loud annoying beeping starts happening and it's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life, it's 2019, how do they think this was okay? Capturing ghosts is still a major component of course, but this game is all about taking in your surroundings and 
mainly just getting a ton of money. Luigi has his priorities straight. I can appreciate that. Doing basically anything here rewards you with a bunch of cash, and it's really satisfying getting it all into your vacuum. The physics in this game are pretty wild. I think the developers are just trying to show off at times. There is a shop that you can use your money in, but the options are pretty limited, so you're probably better off just hoarding all of it instead. Using a rope attached to plungers that you can shoot justifies the entire pulling and slamming mechanic. There's a brand new jumping mechanic to help you get past some obstacles that are in your way or clear out a bunch of stuff around you. The dark light is no longer time limited, which is awesome. You can also once again yell for Mario's name whenever you want. Mario, Mario. It's not as intense as it was in the first game, but it's still nice to see. And yes, apparently this was in Dark Moon as well, but only after you see Mario for the first time. Thank you for the dozens of people who taught me that. Mario! Awesome. And of course, Gooigi. A shoehorned co-op mode in Mansion 3DS is now a full-fledged feature of this entire adventure. With a click of the right stick, you spawn it from its vacuum cleaner jail cell, and Luigi suddenly goes unconscious. But now you have the means to get through plenty of barriers that Luigi himself isn't able to get through. When this mechanic was initially revealed, I was actually really worried that this game was going to become a forced co-op adventure that wouldn't be all that fun in single player, but that's really not the case. Gooigi is just a sort of lesser Luigi. It's sort of like how Nitro Red is to me, just a lesser equivalent, and that's fine. Since it's so easy to get Gooigi in and out of action, it never ends up feeling like a bother. It's actually pretty entertaining getting Gooigi to slip through grates, help Luigi get to places that he can't reach otherwise, or sacrifice him for the greater good. It's okay, Gooigi is immortal, we're now stuck with it for the rest of our lives. There are even a few times where Luigi is held captive and is slowly killed, with Gooigi being the only means to rescue him. That is the true hero here, and it tastes of coffee apparently. Apparently, so that's something. And Gooigi is usually the key to finding the floor's handful of shiny gems, six on each one. Dark Moon had gems as well, but they were spread across all of the missions for a single mansion, and you wouldn't really know which mission you could or couldn't get one in. It was pretty annoying. Here though, it is much more enjoyable to go for, since there's usually unique environments or puzzles tied to them. They ended up actually being a major joy to collect. You don't really get anything great for doing it, but at least getting them is a good time. Similarly, the boos return as well, acting sort of how they did in Dark Moon, though it really feels like they were just kind of thrown in just because the previous games had them. They're not really all that satisfying to find or capture. <laughs> Okay, maybe capturing them is kind of fun. Getting both boos and gems are really the only reason to backtrack to floors that you've already completed, but since the gems are the only thing that feel well spaced out throughout an entire floor, no matter how crammed said floor is, the boos just feel unnecessary, honestly. And going on this conversation of comparing things to Dark Moon, the toads return as well, once again acting like an escort mission, the few times that you do get to play with them. It's me. Oh, Luigi. But you're able to shoot them into glass, and they really like it, so... It's okay in my book. Oh man, there's a high five button too! 10 out of 10 game mechanic. And now it's about that time where we discuss the end of the game. But since the game is newer, I don't want to spoil anything, so go ahead and jump to this time right here. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go right past it. Alright, good, yeah. King Boo is at the top of the hotel. Surprise! There's a pretty simplistic battle on the roof with an easy to figure out attack pattern, and then it's kinda done in no time. It's honestly pretty underwhelming. I guess the whole idea of shooting bombs into his mouth is like a weird throwback to that King Boo fight in Mario Sunshine? But that's that's probably a major stretch. This is fine at best. I just hope that if we get another game, King Boo trapping people in portraits, 
it doesn't happen again. We get it, the king has a weird thing for framed pictures, but it's time to move on. As a result of the battle, the hotel crumbles to the ground. Guiji accepts his fate since, again, he's immortal. And just like last time, thanks to the dark light, everybody is saved. But all of the ghosts are upset to have lost their home. So Egad takes it upon himself to set up a task force to build a brand new one. And this is where all of that money that you've been collecting comes in. Yeah, just like the first game, the new building that you get is dependent on how much money you have. Pretty cool. It's also another reason why you shouldn't really buy anything in the shop. It ruins your rank. That's that that's no good. The game doesn't really warn you ahead of time that they're going to do the whole ranking thing again. So just take take my advice. It's a pretty cute ending, not as charming as Dark Moons, but like that game, the last thing we see is Polter Pup sleeping in Luigi's lap. I have no complaints. And that wraps up Luigi's Mansion 3. There are also some multiplayer modes on top of the main adventure. Making its return is the Scare Scraper, where now up to eight people rummage through randomly designed floors to complete a specific task. And then you keep moving up and up and up the tower until you make it to the roof for a boss fight against the returning Boolossus. Pretty cool. And this is so much better than it was in the last game, partially due to the better controls, but also because each floor has a random objective rather than a set number of pre-established ones. And there's also plenty more opportunities for legitimate cooperation. Operation. This is a whole lot of fun. You know, I didn't really expect too much after Dark Moons mode, but this is a really good time. And then there's the brand new Scream Park, a handful of proper mini games using some mechanics that are found in the main adventure. It's pretty entertaining. You know, it's neat to have an extra reason to pop this game in every now and then. Even though mini games like this are probably the last thing I thought Luigi's Mansion needed, but fun is fun, so I'm cool with it. So yeah, Luigi's Mansion 3, damn fine game. Way better than I thought it was gonna be. As for whether or not it's better than the first game, that's really hard to say. Simply speaking purely on atmosphere, Mansion 1 has still yet to be topped in my opinion. And since it's so short, I will still return to this game constantly for years to come. But man, I still loved nearly everything here in Luigi's Mansion 3. Based on variety, charm, how much fun it is to simply explore, how amazing it is to just see Luigi do anything, this game is a fantastic achievement and I'm really excited to see what comes next from Next Level Games. Dark Moon was a fun game, don't get me wrong, but that first adventure, that was something special. And then we have Luigi's Mansion 3, which is really special as well, just in a different way. Now if we continue down the Resident Evil timeline here, over the shoulder Luigi's Mansion next? The best part about this franchise is not only do we get a handful of really great games, but one of the strongest personalities in the entire Mario universe. Luigi is so lovable, and in my opinion, it's because of these games, and that's awesome. But we also did get a lot of clips of Luigi petting a dog, and I can appreciate that as well. <laughs> Best game Nintendo's ever made. Thank you.